Hey, Fuzzy, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. I'm glad you asked. Mr. Strawberry and I went to Cleveland, Ohio recently. Cleveland? How was Cleveland? Oh, Fuzzy, Cleveland was awesome. Tell me more. Okay, if you insist. So we spent most of our time in the Cleveland Arts District, and first we went to the Contemporary Museum of Art in Cleveland. And there was so much art in Cleveland. It was amazing around every corner. Beautiful artworks and beautiful architecture. What's architecture? Architecture is building design. They had some amazing original building designs. And we also found this really cool giant silver hand sculpture. I'll show you a picture. The hand was so big that you could crawl under it. It was amazing. Oh, sounds kind of scary to me. So we eventually ended up at the Cleveland Museum of Art. And it was so enormous. We spent the whole day there, but we couldn't even see the whole collection. But I was thinking of you. So I wanted you to be able to see my favorite part of the exhibit, uh, my favorite exhibit, which was the Egyptian exhibit. And so I made a little video for you. Oh, for me, you shouldn't have. Well, Fuzzy, I would have liked to have made a video of the entire museum, but it was so enormous from so many different cultures and eras. It would have been too much. So I really love the Egyptian art. So I want you to take a look at it. In the video, I read a lot of artwork descriptions for you. Now, I don't want you to think those are my own words. Those are the descriptions that are in the museum. Although I added a few things and I um, left some things out of the descriptions, but they're pretty much the descriptions of the Museum of Art and they have some fascinating information. So I hope you really enjoy the information. Oh, I think I will. Let's see it. Okay, I'll show it to you, Fuzzy. I created it just for you. It's called The Gift of the River. Ancient Egypt, the Gift of the River. 5,000 BC to 400 AD. Over 5,000 years ago, one of the world's great civilizations arose in Egypt on the banks of the Nile in the northeast corner of Africa. Although the land watered by the Nile amounts to only 3.5% of Egypt's total land area, it supports 98% of the population. For this reason, the Greek historian Herodotus who visited Egypt in the 5th century BC called Egypt the gift of the river. Ben Meheb was a court official. He helped prepare for Amenhotep III's 30-year jubilee festival. Sculpture Amenhotep kneels to present a small altar, upon which squats a statue of the god Thoth in baboon form. This is now for a statue of finance officer and overseer of fields. It was created in 521 to 486 BC. This statue shows Neo Forest holding a shrine containing the picture of the god Ta of Memphis. Statue of Amenemhat III, 1859 to 1814 BC. Even though the statue of the king is uninscribed, its distinctive features identify it without any doubt as the portrait of Amenemhat III. Heavy brow, prominent cheekbones, hollow cheeks, jutting lower jaw, and tightly bunched muscles at the corners of his mouth make a strikingly realistic impression. Not realistic, however, are the king's supersized ears. Instead, they symbolize the ruler's willingness to hear the prayers of his people. 
This is the head of Amenhotep III wearing a round wig. Created between 1391 and 1353 BC in brown quartz. Although he must have been nearly 50 years old when this portrait was carved, Amimhap III appears more youthful than ever. Over a round curly wig, he wears a diadem with side streamers adorned with cobras bearing the sun disk on their heads. This modest king called himself the dazzling sun disk of all the land. Gnome Gods Bearing Offering, 1391 to 1353 BC. Painted Limestone. These blocks from the temple have preserved their original painted decoration to a remarkable degree. The four portly figures in the lower register bear emblems on their heads, identifying them as gnomes of ancient Egypt. Carrying trays heaped with offerings and leading sacrificial animals, they represent the bounty of the land. The Egyptian Belief in Afterlife The Egyptians were great believers in the constant renewal and regaining of life. Just as the sun rose and set each day, the stars moved through the night, and the Nile rose and retreated annually. The Egyptians believed that death was only one part of the natural life cycle. Far from morbid, the Egyptian funerary practices and magic were ultimately based on the promise of resurrection and renewal. Although almost any item of daily life might be placed in the tomb for continued use in the afterlife, other items were made especially for burial. The most important item of funerary equipment was the coffin, which Egyptians called the Lord of Life because it was meant to protect and preserve the body forever. Off of Egyptian history, coffins were simple rectangular boxes decorated with ornamental bands of hieroglyphs. Later on, the mama form shape became popular and decoration became even more elaborate. Two mama form coffins displayed nearby represent the acme of development of this type of coffin. Traditional Egyptian burial practices continued well into Roman times when beautiful lifelike portraits were painted on wood or linen to be inserted into the mummy wrappings. Currently see the cartonage mummy case. Produced around 50 BC to 50 AD. Made of a material similar to paper mache. Gray portraits were painted on wood or linen. Sandaled feet of the deceased are depicted. On the foot are painted soles of the deceased sandals flanked by scorpions for protection. Oh, Mrs. Strawberry, I'm ready. Look, I'm ready. I'm ready to go to Egypt. That was an amazing presentation. Oh, Fuzzy, you look absolutely fantastic. And I get why you want to go to Egypt. But I have to tell you that it's pretty expensive to go there. That doesn't mean you can't go there someday. But I want to say that the next best thing is going to a museum such as the Cleveland Museum of Art. Um, or near us, we have the Columbus Museum of Art. And what I really loved about the Egyptian exhibit is that it showed us our similarities and differences. There are definitely some cultural differences. Um, I don't have often being built with my picture on it, but some people do have fancy coffins. Um, but there's some similarities too. I mean, look. I'm wearing flip-flops, just like the Egyptians did. I like my eye makeup like the Egyptians wore. Had pharaohs. What do we have? We have presidents? Yes. So you can learn so much about how we're the same and how we're different. And it's absolutely fascinating. Will you go with me to the museum next time? You bet. I can't wait. When are we going? Fuzzy, the Columbus Museum of Art is free on Sunday, so what do you say we go? 
and see what we can discover and learn together. Sounds great. Let's go have an adventure at the museum together.